I personally had a siding from Joint Commission because our clinical engineers had a program that automatically recorded all the data for humidity and temperatures, etc. But for some reason, at some point, they turned off the recording. <laughs> Hey, sterile processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. In today's video, I wanna talk about temperatures, humidity, and air exchanges within the sterile processing department. Now, all these used to be in the HSPA manuals back when like the seventh edition and the eighth edition, it would actually spell out for the prep and pack area what the humidity had to be, what the temperature range was. But if any of you have got the ninth edition, you might notice that it doesn't spell those out anymore. Now, the 8th edition manual was published in 2016. Amy came out with a new uh, manual update in 2017, along with Ashray, who governs the v heating and ventilation, came out with a new one in 2017 as well, and then another update in 2021. Now, Ashray stands for the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers. So Amy knew that ASHRAE was coming out with a new manual when they were developing their 2017 manual. So when Amy came out with that, they actually changed the wording within their manual to actually refer to ASHRAE for whatever the current standards are. But one other thing they adopted from ASHRAE is that it really depends on the age of your building and the age of the HVAC system that is in it. Now, if you have a building that was built, let's say in 1985, and the HVAC is all from 1985, we can't really hold you to the ASHRAE 2021 standards if your ventilation system cannot even possibly reach those standards. So you are gonna be held to the standards that were in place for that ventilation system. However, there must be plans to upgrade and move to newer systems within works that you can actually show to joint commission when they're doing their inspection. It's not enough to say our HVAC's too old, we can't reach the proper requirements. There has to be an active plan to fix that. And that's way above you. That's in capital purchasing with your leadership, but it's good to know and it's something you should be asking your leadership are you guys looking at replacing the HVAC in the future so that we can meet the temperature, humidity, and air exchange standards that are currently in place? And they're currently in place because data and science has shown that the current standards, how many air exchangers there are, temperature and humidity, is actually where it needs to be for reducing bacteria and bacteria growth. Now let's talk about what the exact parameters for each section of sterile processing is right now as of the 2021 ASHRAE standards. And just so you know, the standards for sterile processing in 2017 did not change between 2017 and 2021. First off, decontamination and dirty areas must always be negative pressure. And then your clean areas, sterile storage and prep and pack or assembly must be positive pressure. Just right off the bat, you need to know that. If you wanna learn more about positive and negative pressure with air exchanges and how that works. I do have a video talking all about that and I'll link that down below so you can go check it out. It's got really good diagrams to show you how the airflow works between the areas of the department. Okay, so the assembly area has a temperature range of 68 degrees Fahrenheit to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a pretty comfortable range for staff as well as keeping microbial counts down. The max humidity for assembly or prep and pack, whatever you call it, is 60. And the required air exchanges is a minimum of four. In the decontamination area, the acceptable range for temperature is anywhere from 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 60, up to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. If your decontam is 73 degrees, you are sweating like crazy. And I know the majority of us struggle with reducing the temperature and decontam. But if your decontam can reach 60 degrees, that's really good. With decon, there is no requirements for humidity. 
um, which is a good thing because it used to be really difficult to manage the humidity and decon when you have these cart washers, these instrument washers opening and just putting tons of steam back into the department. It can be a pretty moist feeling area. They might not like that I said moist. And for decon, the last thing is there's a minimum of six air exchanges per hour. In the last section, we're gonna talk about the sterile storage, the clean room. The temperature in this area, you would think it would match assembly or prep and pack, but interestingly enough, there is no minimum temperature in this area. There's just a maximum temperature of 75 degrees. I'm not totally sure why there's no minimum and I'm not sure why the um, temperature range is higher than assembly and prep and pack, but that's just the way it is. The max humidity for the sterile storage is 60, just like your prep and pack. And the minimum air exchanges in the sterile storage is four per hour. And last thing I wanna note in this area of temperature, humidity, air exchanges is that all this is probably handled by your clinical engineering or maintenance, whatever you call that department. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, you're responsible to know if your temperature, humidity, and air exchanges are all within compliance. I personally had a siding from Joint Commission because our clinical engineers had a program that automatically recorded all the data for humidity and temperatures, etc. But for some reason, at some point, they turned off the recording and made it so you could only see it when you looked at it. And we got dinged for that because I wasn't periodically checking to make sure those records were maintained. If your clinical engineering department maintenance doesn't have some kind of fancy system like that where it can record the data and print out a report, you need to make sure you can actually measure that in real time with like a hygrometer or something within your department so that you can have a daily check off of what the temperature was on what date and what the humidity was. Joint Commission is going to want to know. That's a big thing they look at is the temperature, the humidity, and the air exchange rates. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. If there's any topics you wanna see, please put it in the comments down below so I can get working on that. Um, I love you guys and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.